Hello and welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigeria's leading initiative in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. It is a 30 minutes awesome packet that comprises brand news, brand and focus, and industry conversation, all in a mix, encompassing thorough and in-depth analysis aimed at promoting the brand idea. I am Oluwa Bukola Omoni. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. We begin Marketing Edge on TV with brand news, where we bring you the latest development around brands and on the field of marketing, advertising and communications in Nigeria and around the world. Now on brand news, Olu Akamu has stepped up as the co-chief executive officer and president of OPE Nigeria. The former co-CEO, while sharing the news of his exit on his LinkedIn, expressed his gratitude to all stakeholders who have contributed immensely to the growth of the digital ecosystem. He noted that a lot still needs to be done collectively in the fintech community to ensure that no one is left behind by the modern digital financial system. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, has instructed Google Limited Liability Company to disengage and clamp down on additional 18 digital money lenders applications operating without relevant regulatory approvals from its Play Store. The Commission, while expressing its displeasure over the misconduct and lack of conformity to regulations, said the drastic measure is part of its effort in shielding citizens from the rising privacy breaches associated with the proliferation of loan sharks in the Nigerian digital space. The Chief Executive Officer of the Commission, Mr. Babatunde Irukera, maintained that the apps were not among those delisted on July 20, 2023. Report from Snowview, an outreach automation and customer relationship management software, indicates that email marketing is poised to reach record heights by 2025. According to data from Snowview, the volume of daily emails sent and received is on the rise. It states that in 2023, an average of 347.3 billion emails were exchanged per day, marking a 4.3% increase compared to the previous year. The platforms also disclosed that the upward trend is expected to continue in 2024, with a projected total of 361.6 billion daily emails. These numbers, it notes, highlight the enduring significance of email as a communication channel in today's digital landscape. Furthermore, Snowview maintains that a substantial 89% of marketers rely on email as their primary tool for lead generation and suggests that these statistics underscores the effectiveness and widespread adoption of email marketing strategies within the marketing industry. Omnicom Group reveals that its media service division, known as Omnicom Media, has acquired Brazil's commerce and retail media agencies, Outpromo and Global Shopper. According to PR Newswire, Omnicom Media Group CEO Florian Adamski says with Global Shopper and Outpromo now part of the group, OMG will gain deep commerce and retail media expertise in Latin America's largest market, adding that such expertise with Omnicamers will create end-to-end -end solutions that enable always-on insight, activation, optimization, and attribution across the entire commerce landscape. The report mentioned that Ricardo Franken, CEO of Outpromo, and Mauricio Gallian, CEO of Global Shopper, will retain a minority stake in the company and continue to serve in their current roles. Meanwhile, the acquisition is expected to close in the third quarter and is subject to customary closing conditions, including regulatory approval. That was brand news. Next is Branding Focus, just after the break. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. Now on Branding Focus. In the life of some brands, age matters. In the life of others, age appears not to matter the most. 
What matters is brand equity. But for the Glass of Smith Klein brand, one that has remained a long-standing and an influential player with a robust equity and age-long brand promise, its destiny has been challenged by the bedeviling and of fate and fortune that have all marked the Nigerian corporate community. Glasso Smith Klein Consumer Nigerian PLC, whose embodiment emblazoned consumer well-being, has remained a science-led global healthcare company with a special purpose and cardinal points which revolve around helping people do more, feel better, and live longer. For the past 51 years, the company has intentionally taken care of Nigerians with quality products and unparalleled health research to ensure the well-being of all. GSK, as it is popularly known, was established in 1951 as a healthcare company that researches, develops, and manufactures pharmaceutical medicines, vaccines, and consumer healthcare products. No doubt. It has been a turbulent journey for most companies who operate in the hostile and uneasy terrain of the Nigerian economy that is fueled with sharks and other dangerous predators. Nigerian business environment has become a place of the survival of the fittest, haunted by various regulatory orders as well as infrastructural gaps and bottlenecks, which include high cost of production, incessant fluctuation of foreign exchange, which has metamorphosed into a significant deterrent for both business operators and investors. The negative impact of the economy has demonstrated that only the paranoid survive when it is armed with agility in an unfathomable economy. Today, GSK, an international company that has become local for the love of its consumers, is exiting Nigeria. This is not the first time a legacy company has left the shores of Nigeria for various economic reasons. According to a newspaper report, in the last five years, two of the biggest manufacturing companies that closed down their manufacturing plants are Protea and Gamble and Glasso Smith Klein. Remember that Glasso Smith Klein kicked off with the name Beecham Limited in 1972 when it blazed the trail with grits and guts as a market leader in the nutritional healthcare and the pharmaceutical segments while gaining strong market penetration and unparalleled traction across many families. All through these years, GSK's main focus has mainly revolved around two reportable segments. The consumer healthcare segment, which consists of oral care, over-the-counter medicines, and nutritional healthcare, and the pharmaceutical segment, consisting of vaccines and prescription drugs. Reiterating that all necessary legal proceedings will be met as regards employees and shareholders, the company, after 51 years today, probably has over 290 employees in its payroll. That was Brand in Focus. Next is Industry Conversations, where we have discussions with industry thought leaders who have distinguished themselves in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. Just after this break. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand idea. Welcome to Industry Conversations, where we have discussions with industry thought leaders who have distinguished themselves in the business of brand management and in the management of brand business. Today we'll be speaking with the CEO of Extreme Ideas and the president of AAAN, Mr. Steve Babeko. Congratulations sir, on, uh, you know, the congratulations to you and your uh, agency on, you know, the milestone you just won. It's an amazing uh, feat for the company. How do you feel, sir? Uh, I, I feel, I feel totally, thank, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Thanks to Mark Tinej for putting this together. I feel totally ec ecstatic if there's any word like that. You know, for me, I think this is the fulfillment of a dream I had as a young copywriter that started my career way back in 1994 at MC and Sachi back in the days. I, and from day one when I resumed and I've a couple of days into it, realizing that there's something called the Cannes Lions. And that at that time, 
Nigeria had never won it before. I thought it's possible oh. for a Nigerian agency to win it. Like. And, and I, I, I've been chasing it all, all this while. And thanks to my team, we finally made it happen. Great. We'll be coming back to that. So I just want to ask you, I know it's been a while since we had an interview with you. And, you know, a lot has happened in the mm -hmm. industry. I, I want to ask, what is your assessment of the creative landscape? landscape which is you know your particular tough well i think the creative landscape is grown i mean uh, nothing even uh mm -hmm. testifies to the growth of the uh, creative landscape uh more than the fact that uh nigerian agencies are now winning international laurels mm -hmm. we, we are not just extra by death you know, so many of our triple a agencies are flying the flag for the country and really winning internationally i think that's really great and if you now broaden the horizon and say, okay, you're not just talking about advertising. And as far as I'm concerned, advertising is the king of that creative landscape. Let's mm -hmm. just be clear about that, you know. <laughs> but if you really wanted to broaden the horizon and talk about other segments of the creative landscape, we're winning with music. Mm -hmm. uh, globally, right now, Bonner Boy, Davido, <laughs> you know, Ashake, Wiz, Tiwa Savage, mm -hmm. all of this. Uh, Yemi Aladi, all of these incredible musicians are, are doing amazing stuff. Now we go to movies. Uh, movies also, I mean, right now in Nigeria, the local movies are actually outselling some of the blockbusters, some of the foreign blockbusters, so we're winning as well. Uh, so if you look at it, uh, uh, fashion-wise, we're winning. Uh -huh. uh, culinary trends, we're winning. Uh -huh. So if you look at the whole ballpark of the creative industry, I think, Nigeria is on the cusp of becoming a global major superpower. Well, great. So with what we witnessed at the Cant Lions Creativity Festival, mm -hmm. how would you rate uh, Nigeria's advertising ecosystem with that? Uh, clearly, the, the result is out. I mean, the fact that uh, we are able to win, huh. first and foremost, I mean, let's be clear also, this is the first time the entire West Africa will have the opportunity to, to win. 70 years. South Africa has won. Oh. Uh, East Africa has won. North Africa has won. Leaving West Africa out in the cold for the past 70 years. The fact that we're able to win shows you the power and the fire that the Nigerian advertising industry is bringing uh, to the global front today. And, and I feel very proud of our colleagues and all of the practitioners in Nigeria for all of the feats we're recording. Okay, great. But what would you say uh, have been responsible for the low turnout of Nigerian professionals, you know, at the event? I think it's purely economics. Huh. Uh, don't forget that, uh, and I keep saying it, even, even the, apart from the turnout, low turnout of Nigerians at the event, even the to low turnout of entries from Nigeria, okay. purely economics. And I'll give you an example. If there was a small agency in Estonia, small European country, right? That is like the size of extreme ideas. They are billing, they make their money in euro, right? Mm. If they are entry for can lions, I don't know how much it is for one entry, if it's 500 euro or 750 euro, as the case may be, they've earned money in euro. So they are doing one for one. Now, let it get to the turn of a Nigerian agency. Mm. They've earned money in Naira, Okay. They have to do 850 or 900 to 1. So you're already disenfranchised. Huh. And not to talk of the same... Uh, you see what the airline industry is even doing to us right now. We're paying more for tickets for the same journey, the same distance compared to our neighbors in West Africa. So that already has put us in a back foot when it comes to being able to afford the kind of uh, resources that would help us be majorly present in some of those festivals. Great, that, that's very hard. So uh, would you say Nigeria is at par with other global uh, professionals, you know, in leveraging technology to create compelling and enduring campaigns? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you look at uh, the campaign we won with, it's not just creativity, it is the creativity combined with technology that gave that campaign the edge, in my opinion. One, we worked with uh, Little Steps Initiatives in Port Harcourt. The issue of suit had become an incredible uh, disaster in that area as the, one of the major oil producing cities, Port Harcourt. Uh, all of the illegal refineries throwing uh, lots of carbon in the air. Mm. 
to the extent that you can't even open your window in Port Harcourt today. And even when you close your window, if you wake up in the morning and just dab on any surface, you see soot on your hands. So they reached out to us and we reached out to the German Environmental Protection Agency. They gave us data for suits for about 41 countries. We used that to create a website, overlaid, uh, poured all of those data for those 41 countries, and then did, uh, um, we, we had an algorithm that will help us calculate people's actual life expectancy. The average life expectancy for Nigeria is about 52 years. Yeah. Now, if you put all of that algorithm on it, if you tell us how long you've lived in Portacourt, your name, it can generate the fact that you have maybe 10 or 15 more years to live. Oh. And all of that, we now put AI on top of that, that will now send, that now sends letters to your House of Rep and your senators, bringing to their attention the fact that suit is a problem for Portacourt residents. So it is not just creativity, it is how you are able to combine creativity, creativity with a whole lot of tech. And I think Nigeria is really, really pushing hard in that front. In that that's, front. that's so good to know. Okay, so what, what would you say are your learnings from the global event you know, that you think Nigeria advertising can infuse into this? I think it's just a bit of more confidence. You know, I think sometimes we get a little too, not too self-assured. You know, okay. the economy hasn't helped either. So sometimes uh, for every business you get, you're holding on so tight to it. And sometimes when... You are left with about when you're left in that survival mode, you take some of the things you shouldn't take. Uh, our colleagues outside this country, what I see more is that self confidence. They know they can quickly say no. Uh, I think we should learn to say no more than we're saying now and, and just be able to work for the clients that we're really, really happy to work for, you yeah. know, who will also be happy to work with us, you yes. know, because we did this relationship between agency and client. It is not master-servant relationship. It should be relationship of business partners and associates. So because we're all working on the same side of, we're all batting for the same team. We're rooting for the same team. So we should, as we, I, I want to see more, more of our people getting more self-assured and more confident on okay. the job. Okay, so let me ask you, what is the future of AI, you know, seeing the brilliant work shown at the prestigious kind of line awards and, you know, how are practitioners in your sector leveraging this tool to optimize, you know, their client bottom line? I think AI, yeah, if I will, to, to start with, I would be surprised if there was no question about <laughs> on AI from you today. Everybody's talking about AI and how, well, it depends on what side of the divide you fall. Some mm -hmm. people are so petrified about AI, oh, AI is like the antichrist is going to come and take away <laughs> all our jobs. And, but for me, I've always said, AI, and tech generally mm -hmm. is what will give our creativity better wings to fly. So I think instead of being scared of it or it's being petrified of it, we should just embrace it and take the good sides. I mean, there are so many things that we can do with AI. And I see my colleagues are on it already. I mean, if you see, I'm sure this year's can or any of the global uh, com uh, advertising uh, award shows that I have joined, you are, you, are, you are drowning in work from, that is AI related. So I think sometimes we need to, to just take one or two steps back. Yes, AI is the new tech, but the new tech of today will become the old tech of tomorrow. Yeah. Let's just be much more, more broad-minded knowing that it has certain positive aspects that it's bringing. Let us embrace those positive aspects and run with it. Okay, great. So I want to ask you about the audience measurement. I know it's been over a year, a year since mm -hmm. it was created and introduced. You know, can you say that uh, the system or the scheme has actually achieved what it was, you know, implemented for? Can you say that's, you know, help practitioners? Like, has it actually helped practitioners? And how well has the challenge of, you know, the measurement been solved? It's, it, the, the, you know, so for some of these huge problems confronting the industry, there are actually no silver bullet for it that say, okay, look, find this solution and then the problem is gone. Uh, shout out to the former Minister of Information, Elijah Lai Mohamed, uh, for constituting that uh, uh, presidential task force oh. on audi audience measurement. And uh, let me use this opportunity to, to say rest in peace to the former chairman uh, of uh, the audience measurement task force, uh, Mr. Tulu Bukoya. He passed away a couple of months ago, sadly. Mm. So that work still remains inconclusive as, as it is because we really could not con conclude. I was also a member of that task force and uh, 
I'm using this opportunity to reach out to the new president, uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed Nuhu, to maybe revisit this issue. I mean, I guess once the new ministers are in place, then he will be able, the new minister for information will be able to take it on. Uh, it's important that we have the audience measurement fully concluded. Okay. And uh, yeah, the, the members of the last committee are still on standby. If they find it them useful, I'm sure okay. they can recall them to continue the work so that we can put it to bed because the value is uh, immeasurable. Great. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask, what is your position on some of the recent regulatory reforms introduced by ACON? Well, again, I'll say a big shout out to the uh, DG of ACON, uh, Dr. Olariko Fadolapo. I think he's done an incredible job just generally trying to sanitize the industry. I mean, uh, I, I think the impact of, of those reforms are really far reaching uh, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. You know, even though there's still the tug of war between uh, a member of the ecosystem, uh, an association that's totally at variance or at maybe in conflict with the APCON position. I mean, between them and APCON, I expect them to, to resolve those issues. And as AAAN, we'll always be available to lend our voice where we think it, where, where needed and where it, where it, where it is uh, necessary. But as far as I'm concerned and as far as AAAN is concerned, we're happy with all of the reforms that APCON has made. Let's not forget what we're dealing with now is not just about law and order. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with about livelihoods and the lives of people. Huh. We're dealing with lives of hundreds, about thousands of people who are employees within the advertising ecosystem. Now, if we leave, if we had left everything the way it was before the DG of Acon came in and started sanitizing, okay. in a couple of more years, there will be no advertising industry. Okay. And that will mean no jobs for people to do. And I don't think that's what the government wants. The government wants to, to strengthen all of the different uh, ecosystems so that we can get better and be able to hire more people. Now, if with all of the things going on before where people can owe you for endless number of days, advertising agencies were beginning to shut down. Yes. I'm the president, so I know this. So how are we going to improve the capacity of advertising agencies to be able to hire more people? And if you look at it, just check it by numbers. Mm. The GDP of Nigeria is the highest in, in Africa today. I stand to be corrected. Close to over $400 uh, billion mm -hmm. uh, per, per annum, right? Compared to advertising industry in Nigeria. Why? Because all of those laws and regulations are intact in South Africa that allows the government to patronize registered advertising agencies okay. and allow people not to be owed endlessly and allowed a lot of professionalism. But that has been missing in Nigeria. And if the government wants this industry to improve so that it is in the interest of government that the advertising industry continues to grow. Like I said, if they grow, then they can hire more people. If they hire more people, then they will pay more taxes. But if the law does not make it uh, conducive for us to grow, then you are killing the goose that's supposed to be laying the eggs. So that is where I salute the courage of the Akon DG for being able to boldly come out and do all of the reforms that he's been doing. And I hope the new government will encourage him to do more. And I'm sure the, the new government, they would really like, you know, government like taxes. So, you know, absolutely. something they absolutely. want to hear. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, talking about technology and skill set, what do you think is that uh, will be typical requirement the typical requirement for technology and skill set for, you know, creative agencies of the future. It's not of the future. We are talking about creative agency of yesterday. You, we, we as, as creative people or as an industry, we need to start looking at new uh, designations hmm. as far back as since last year because we're already late. Okay. Uh, you, you know, I, I've, I've always said engineering is what's going to drive marketing going into the future. And I mean engineering as an umbrella word for technology, basically. See, right now at Extreme Ideas, we're in the market to hire a new CTO, the chief technology officer mm. for the group. Because it's no longer about just creating communication, feel good communication. It's about being able to create one platform for the agency that 
whether the client gives you a brief or not, yeah. you have platform that will keep generating revenue for yourself. And that is where we should be looking at. So we, we're looking at getting developers, uh, tech people to, to come into our industries to help us amplify the idea, you know, and I think that will be the model for most creative agencies going forward. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the bright idea. And that's the much we can take on this episode of Marketing Edge on TV. Join us for the concluding part of our interview with Steve Babaiko. Same time next week, I am Oluwa Bukola from Money. Whether she's playing or watching the beautiful game, we're here for her. Here for all 64 matches of the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023. Live on Supersport. Get and stay connected. Never miss a moment. Instant breaking news from all over the globe. Live streaming of your favorite programs delivered directly to you. Watch anytime from anywhere on your mobile or smart devices. Download the TVC News app today. Available on Google Play and Apple Store. The TVC News at 7 and the TVC News at 10 are not like any other news broadcast. It's the big news hour, the hour for the big breaking stones. We've got some of the best reporters on the field. Taking you through as it happens. It's fast-paced, hard-hitting. With investigations that matter. Bringing in news that affects your life. With sport, entertainment and business news so you don't miss a thing. Experience resourceful coverage was death every night. Nigeria's Niger Delta region, where the black gold continues to flow and fuel Africa's largest economy, where the line between wealth and poverty has never been thinner. Oil, gas, politics, development and community issues, all are highly valuable commodities in the Niger Delta. How do they combine and how can they work together to spawn a new era in the Niger Delta as he probes deep to analyze issues in the region from angles never before explored. Inside the Niger Delta with Mamode Akuga, the authentic voice of Nigeria's oil-rich region. Communications, Nigeria's leading independent broadcast company, has been officially designated as a great place to work. Over the past three years, we have transformed our workplace into one which is respectful, caring, rewarding, and provides great benefits to all our 500 employees. We thank our team for giving us the chance to show that partnership between employer and employee really works. TVC Communications, officially designated as a great place to work and now the only broadcasting and media company not just in Nigeria but throughout continental Africa to be fully certified. TVC Communications, a great Nigerian company, a great Nigerian place to work. At TVC News, wherever the big news stories happen,